Hi there, it's Sandy, and today I'm going to be journaling Matthew 18, 20, where two or more are gathered in his name and doing that via coffee cups. So I have a printout that you can print from the link in the doobly-doo and download that, print it, stick it on the window, and then trace it onto whatever you're going to draw it onto. And this is a chart. It's also a free download in a different place. I'll put a link to that as well. I have another video on my other channel explaining this more and showing more of the chart. I'm going to use some of these different types of textures, though, in today's drawing. And starting off with using some contour lines. And these contour lines basically flow along the shape of something. So when you're using a, a line that indicates movement, it really works well to use a contour line because it's going to give that more rounded shape of an object. And here I wanted the swirls of steam coming off of the coffee cups to feel really organic and have that flow. When you're making lines like this, you can crisscross them and it starts to make them look like they twirl. And you can make some of them stop and go behind each other, but they also work just, you know, flowing right on top of one another. And you can add other little pieces. This is also a great way to draw fire. So if you ever have wanted to draw fire, then you can come back to this tutorial and remember how to do that. Because just making wavy lines that overlap works great. Now for the coffee portion, I wanted something dark. So I looked at the chart and I'm going to use the scribble technique. So the scribble technique is basically just doing a bunch of doodly bits in, in whatever area that you're trying to fill in. And I wanted this to be nice and dark. So I'm making figure eights, just over and over and over figure eights. And generally when I do scribble drawings, that's what it is. It's just, just scribbling. And figure eight seems to be very natural and you can get into the rhythm of it quite easily. And so I'm going to do all of the coffee using this technique. And that whole download will show you, you know, it just has on it a whole bunch of different ways you can do things. And the other video will explain a lot of these techniques a little bit better. And then I started trying to outline my coffee mugs and following generally my sketch. A lot of times my sketch is kind of loose. I did it against the window, so it wasn't maybe perfect, but I'm trying to even up the handles so that they are, have even widths across them. So the coffee mugs are shaped the same on the left and the right. So if yours come out funky like mine, you can clean that up and on this Toma River paper, pencil will erase when I'm all done real easily. So then I picked another of the textures, another of the techniques, and this one is just taking shapes and putting them next to each other. So you draw one shape and then fill in the blank space with another and just keep moving across the piece so you can keep adding more and more shapes to it. And I did decide I wanted to do something different at the bottom of the cup just for the sake of using something different. It's always fun to shake it up a little bit. So I stopped the pebbles, or I guess it looks like pebbles here, and made some lines going around it. And I'm going to make them closer together on the outside edges and then wider apart in the center. And then it's going to go back to being closer together on the other side. That's going to give it a little bit of roundness, just having those kind of darker shadows on the sides. And I'll do the same on the inside of this mug. So one down, two more to go. And I'm going to pick a texture that's really different because I want each one of these to feel like very, very different mugs. They're representing different people. We're all different. And even though we gather in Jesus' name, we are, we are all unique. So I decided to make three completely different mugs. And I'm using a dashed line for this. There's a couple different ways you can apply dashed lines, as you can see on the chart, and that sort of thing. I'm just going to make almost stitching across and around the entire thing and then making some lines on the handle so I can give it a little darker texture on the handle. For the inside of this mug, I wanted to use a combination of two of these tiling types of things. Tiling is basically when you repeat the same texture and just in blocks. So I'm doing like three or four lines horizontally, three or four lines vertically, three or four lines diagonally one direction than the other. And I'm doing them tighter on the outside edges and looser in the middle. Again, the same principle as before. Highlights are going to have more light in them. So this is real simple shading, having darker on both sides. 
there's all kinds of other ways to do that. And this last mug, since not much of it is showing because it's in the back, I thought would be a good one to use this stippling because I get bored with stippling. If a whole mug was in stippling, that would take a long time. So I've decided to do the back mug. And again, putting darker color around the outside edges. And I did decide to take that coffee mug and make it show in between some of the steam. And then put dark around the handle of it and then going from dark toward light going toward the top of this mug. So it's darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. Once this is done, it's a matter of figuring out what you want to do with the rest of your page. And for some people, you're going to just take this coffee mug and you're going to go do it in your color pencils and be totally fine with it. And nobody else is going to ever do this page. That's totally fine. But what I wanted to do was anchor my drawing. I wanted to have something dark and heavy at the bottom. So we're all sitting together around a table. I wanted it to be something that would contrast with the mugs because I didn't want the textures and stuff and the patterns in the background to fight for attention. And for me, I had these mugs being light colors. Or, you know, if, you, if you call this colors, they're, if you squint at it, they're light grays. There's, there's a lot of white paper showing through. So I wanted a lot of dark in the background. If you were doing dark mugs, you would want light in the background. So the two would stand out apart from each other. So I decided instead of trying to make the cross hatching, which is the top and bottom bar, instead of making that go across the entire thing, I was going to get really bored with that too. I get bored easily. Just ask my dogs. They're, they're just like me. They see a squirrel and they want to go run after something different. So I did different textures just in waves across the background on the bottom. I glued it into my Bible using just a little tiny bead of wet glue going down the center, just some Elmer's glue, and had the page trimmed down and ready so I could just tuck it in there and it will be nice and secure. And then decided to add Matthew 1820 onto one of the mugs. So I had left a space to do that and then put hearts because our meetings together in the name of Jesus are full of love. So there's my quick page, Happy Inktober. I'll be doing pen and ink types of things all month long, and there might be downloads for other ones too. I don't know. So check the download down below, and you can get both the chart as well as the mugs graphic, so you can copy that and put it in your Bible. All right, I will talk to you guys next week. See ya. Bye.